So when the voters come to vote on election day, they will be asked which ballot style, which party's primary would you want to vote in? And so there are three options for voters. One is the Democratic ballot that includes all the Democratic offices, the nonpartisan judicial races, and then the school race and school millages if that is on their ballot in any special elections. And then of course there's a Republican ballot, which the Republican ballot contains all the Republican candidates, um, the nonpartisan judicial the annual school, the school millage, and any special election. And then there is a ballot that's called a nonpartisan uh, ballot. This ballot only contains the nonpartisan judicial general election and any annual school election, millage, or special election. It's really important for voters to realize that nonpartisan in this instance does not mean that I'm an independent, that I don't uh, consider myself to be a Republican or a Democrat. Mm -hmm. And so if you get that ballot, then there won't be any of the political candidates on it that you might be looking for. And then another thing voters uh, need to be aware of, if you're looking for libertarian candidates, Green Party candidates, or independent candidates, they will not appear on the ballot until the general election. So basically, this is a, a primary just for the Republican and Democratic parties. And then, of course, we have the annual school and nonpartisan judicial. Jennifer, we want to make it clear that just because you request a Democratic vote uh, ballot in May means uh, doesn't mean that you have to request that same one in November. Is that correct for the um, the main elections? Yes, so that's actually 100% correct. Come November, mm -hmm. there will be only one ballot selection, and that ballot selection will contain the winners from the primary election in May for the Republican and Democratic parties. Now, there is a very good uh, chance that we will actually have a runoff election mm -hmm. for the primary for both the uh, Democratic Party and the Republican Party. So voters need to be aware that if in May you take a Democratic ballot, mm -hmm. then for the June runoff election, you will be required to take a Democratic ballot. Same thing for the Republican. If you take a Republican ballot in May, you will vote a Republican ballot in June. But now if you took a nonpartisan ballot or you did not vote in May for the June runoff election, you would get to decide which ballot to take. So you can, if you are registered already, vote in the runoff only and not the uh, primaries on May 24th? That's correct. So there isn't a requirement for you to have voted in the May election mm -hmm. uh, to vote in the runoff election, but there is what's called crossover voting, which is a crime, which means that you can't choose a Democratic ballot, let's say in May, and then go in and vote a Republican ballot for the June runoff election.